Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and just anything else that catches our fancy. Now, I am Vince Stone, that is Joe Bryant, and over there is Pedro Mateus. Hello. Yes. <laughs> and together with everyone watching us live on Twitch, man, we do get quite the chunky one to talk about this week, and um, Pedro, I want you to start off with... Um, <laughs> Pedro was so excited about something that it, it amused me. <laughs> no, it amused me awesome. that he thought, it's like, you know what? I need to mention this. I need to let everyone know about yeah. this. <laughs> because See, I, 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 I feel partially guilty because I gave you, <laughs> I think, an appropriate amount of static for having two Burger Kings delivered. Yes. <laughs> He was excited. <laughs> Two Burger Kings on the same day. I was very, very happy that day. Uh, the no, the, see this uh, lunch at lunchtime. Uh, Nori and uh, visitor person uh, who's staying with us this week uh, went into town to do social things and uh, basically get out of the house before the other lockdown hits. Uh, the um, so I was left alone and it's like okay, I need something for lunch. I went to go get Burger King, but it was closed. So I went looking for something else and I found out that Uber Eats must have been feeling left out because it's the only food delivery company that didn't deliver here. So they do now and they have McDonald's. So I ordered some McDonald's for lunch. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's my story. <laughs> I'm easy to amuse. Awesome, Pedro. <laughs> How about you, Jill? What's going on? Oh, jeez. So I had a great time celebrating the holidays at Disneyland with my Steve husband. Uh, that was a lot of fun. The 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 uh, Christmas fantasy parade was incredible, and then to watch the lighting of the castles with all the icicles, and then the snow that fills uh, <laughs> the Main Street USA is pretty awesome. The fake soap, <laughs> the fake snow. So I mean, <laughs> they wash yeah. them. Snope. We call it snow. <laughs> that, that's what it says. Disneyland, come and get bathed. Yeah. <laughs> we know you all stink. You've been here all day and yeah. it's California. So there you go. Here's yeah. some soap. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> I started getting a bunch of notifications yesterday. Didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. Then I started getting Ooh. other notifications about, <laughs> hey, something's going on. What? what? Long story short. It takes a minute to sort through 14 years of Reddit posts and comments to make sure there wasn't anything terribly salacious in it, <laughs> which there wasn't. It was very, I, I mean, well, it was featured <laughs> yeah. rather publicly, so I, you could see it. <laughs> I'm very like people going through my profile because I knew that. I was like, I better go. Because again, this is not, you know, I'm not a um, somebody who burns social media accounts. If I say something, I just stick with it. And again, the, my Reddit account is 14 years old. So I was like, oh, yeah, let's drag that back. To, did I make anything that doesn't fly? And I was like, ah, it's a little let down. What I'm talking about, everyone, uh, on the video version is, uh, yeah, that Linus kid. Uh, <laughs> I finally got around to watching this video so we could talk about it a little bit. And uh, just out of the corner of my eyes, I says, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh no. There's and uh yeah. there's your picture. <laughs> that, that that's definitely my uh Reddit account where I was talking about somebody was asking about new NV encode, which is the one that doesn't do so much copying from the CPU to memory RAM and back and forth and all. And it's like no, it's not it I, I kid you not. I kid you not already on Reddit somebody not Reddit, but um Twitter has written back to that because I, I thought it was amusing. I'm like, well, that, that's kind of funny. I'm like, yes, it is. I used NV and code. I was like, wow, don't, don't, don't bother reading what we're talking about or here. watching the video. Right. right. <laughs> I mean, that that was just like some full metal confidently and I didn't write them back. I didn't write them back. Um, <laughs> and of course, you know, of course, the, like, well, this is uh, Linux is the new NV and code. NVIDIA's fault. Go rewatch that announcement where they're on. This will be available for Linux. I mean, that was NVIDIA's ball. And they went, oops, dropsy doodle. But that's not all we got to talk about this week because that video, if you're unfamiliar, Linus, uh, what's his last name? Tech Tips? Sebastian. 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 <laughs> I don't, um, is doing a, 
Linux series where him and his cohort are trying to use Linux until they don't or whatnot. And this has led to some interesting developments, usually a lot of head on death syndrome for a lot of people in the audience. (laughs) There was a lot of that happening yesterday. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Because it it is kind of difficult. You got to think about it. I mean, this is Linus tech. That channel is it's technology entertainment. Yes. And even for me, it's difficult to, put that through the right scope. Like this is not intended for. I, it, it's not intended for the people who know, yeah. uh, or if mm-hmm. you do know, just go in knowing full well that you, what they say is going to either irritate you or make you laugh very, very loud. <laughs> it's like reality TV with electronics, but mm-hmm. I do want to pose this because I want to bring this up. Some projects are going through the trouble of making things Linus proof. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Starting with a GoXL on Linux. Uh, a yeah. recent a recent commit was merged. Um, new proof installation instructions uh, based on what feedback came up in part two of Lin- uh, Linus's Linux daily driver challenge. Um, yeah. So what did they add, Jill? Yeah, they had these commands must be ex- executed in the console. To do this, open the terminal, paste the following lines, and press enter. <laughs> so, and then you just uh, you know put in wget and the usual for getting scripts. Dot sh. <laughs> but that was great that they they you know made that easier to read and to install for the average user. I did watch the video and I saw the clicking execute on the dot sh script from pedro did did mm-hmm. how did you process that uh, i mean the double clicking to run the sh script that's <laughs> fine if you're on kde like linus is it, it gives you the option do you want to just run it do you want to run it in the terminal or do you want to open it for editing that's fine. That's absolutely fine. What annoyed me was the right click save as it's like, oh, but it, it, the file <laughs> extension is sh. Why isn't it an sh file? Apparently file extensions don't mean the type of files. Like, have you ever used an operating system? I'm not just talking about Linux. I'm talking about Windows too. Go ahead and mm-hmm. change an HTML file in Windows uh, and then change it to dot bat. See how that flies. Yeah. Bats can fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, Windows batch files mm, mm, that are just renamed uh, HTMLs. No, sorry. That 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 one kind of irked me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's, uh, it's been interesting to watch. And, you know, it's the video series is doing exactly what it was designed to do is generate the internet mm-hmm. drama and uh, yes. <laughs> mission, yeah. mission accomplished. Uh, and I and will com- play devil's creating advocate good press for Linux. <laughs> I will play, oh, well, not yeah. devil's advocate, squeaky Canadian Linus's <laughs> advocate uh, as he does bring up a couple of good points. The Vans probably going to disagree with me, but the NVIDIA control panel looking like it's from 10 years ago or 20 years ago, because it is, that's, that's how it's always looked <laughs> on Linux. Uh, but that, that I agree much like AMD, not having any kind of control panel, uh, on Linux that needs improving. That's the kind of, that's exactly the kind of stuff that needs improving. And if, I don't know, adding a couple of more lines to a readme.md on (laughs) on GitHub (laughs) is going to help people get past some of their inherent... In Pedro's defense, yes, that would require the end user to read the instructions before blindly trying to power their way through something using their extensive next button clicking knowledge. Um, Mm -hmm. This is not a stab Mm -hmm. at Windows. This is a stab at people who don't bother... RTFM. Like, yes. No, I got this. No, you don't. I mean, this is something you need to figure out at some point in your life. You're going to injure yourself. And uh, to the NVIDIA thing, NVIDIA, don't don't listen to this monster. I like my CRTs. Okay. I like my CRTs in my um, NVIDIA <laughs> You can leave the CRTs. Just add a bit more functionality to what that. What more do you want, panel, though? What, what does it not do? <laughs> 
Uh, it doesn't give you the dynamic super resolution options like the um, Windows version does. It doesn't give you... A, well, it does give you the per application profiles, mm -hmm. but it is very, 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 very convoluted and very limited in the way that it does it. It's much easier mm -hmm. and much more intuitive with the Windows version of it. The... Um, actual separation of things and the ability to actually persistently save the settings without you having to set the NVIDIA config file to read only, otherwise it keeps changing every time you open that stupid little control panel, NVIDIA. No, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> mine does not. Yes, after you make it read only, no. I had to do the same thing to mine. I didn't have to make anything read only, I just saved it in my home directory after I named it and put it the uh, settings there and I told it, hey, pull settings from this. Hmm. <laughs> like well, that's another way around it i just made it read only it's like okay I it mean, doesn't change like anymore in the thing to go to save that in your home directory so it loads that mm -hmm. every time <laughs> but truth be told told the nvidia control center under windows still looks like it's from windows 95 it has more functionality yes but the interface is pretty lame looking <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen. Um, I was talking to Jordan about this last night uh, when we were streaming some Pro Force. And Jordan's like, it basically, it's it's more bushy. It blinks more, and um, maybe that's what's holding Linux back. We we need more bushy. It exposes blinking. a lot more functionality. Yeah, that's and that that's is, the big know, problem. You, it, it's, you've <laughs> you've well, got well, a three D rotating <laughs> Nvidia logo. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like you hit me with like one hard fact, like super scaling resolution, which I admittedly something I wouldn't use, but okay, that that is one. And, uh, <laughs> it, it's the it, it's not just the Nvidia control panel. I'm railing against Nvidia here because that is the example that's on the table. Oh, hang on, Pedro. But, hang on, hang on. Wayland, where's your god now? Yes, <laughs> it's. All of that functionality that you have, and you're deliberately not exposing it. Mm -hmm. So, who are you building that for? Because you're Listen, not exposing it to the people who might want Pedro, to use it. And Pedro, I'm speaking on behalf of NVIDIA because I just got a memo from them. They're like, did you see what that Linus kid tried to do to an SH script? You want us to expose more functionality? <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> I'm not saying that uh, Linus made all good points through that video. In fact, he made some really dumb ones. Uh, but that one, the NVIDIA one, was that was a good point. All that right. GUI yeah. is atrocious. Mm -hmm. It is. Don't 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 change it, <laughs> NVIDIA. But make something for Wayland because I, you know, in a decade or so, I'll be around to that. And I wanted to be there waiting for me. All right. So speaking of wishy, blinky edges, filed off things and uh, popular desktops, apparently. Yes. <laughs> apparently the second most popular uh, desktop environment is introducing something that the most popular desktop environment has been, uh, well, has basically made it hit central points since version three. We're talking about the overview type of situation if you ever click the activities uh button on gnome you'll get that full screen interface that shows you all the windows you have open and the uh virtual desktops that you have along with the applications on the corner if you want to click on that and well kde is now introducing kde overview it is very much the same if you've used uh what am i looking at yep uh, you're looking at the three windows that are open in that virtual desktop. Uh -huh. They're all splayed out side by side so you can see each one. So, so and you could change virtual desktops from there. And uh, uh, <laughs> They made alt tab wishy. No, that's not alt tab. Uh, that's like you hitting mm -hmm. the windows key in GNOME 3 and it opens that full screen thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, maybe I, need to, maybe I need to that rephrase is what that. that does. How is this better than alt tab? Uh, it's different. <laughs> it's not better or worse. It is very much the as, gnome as the uh, resident way of doing things. I'm, look, I'm looking at this and going, hmm, what was the design philosophy? I bet we could uh, utilize more of G uh, CPU and GPU cycles if we did this instead of all that. Uh, that's, that's something you should tell just, the it's users. It's more visual. Although it has... 
It has been demonstrated mm-hmm. time and time again that uh, users seem to prefer the big whooshy things. Remember the <laughs> the big <laughs> cube for switching virtual uh, desktops? Yes, that yeah, was that, that was, was a toy. Way. No one used it. <laughs> oh, I used it. Well, uh, <laughs> I like th- this may be a too. toy to to a lot of people. This may very well be a toy because you've been using KDE because maybe you don't like the overview style of situation and you prefer the more traditional desktop environment paradigm. Uh, yeah. You don't have to use this, and uh, but there were people who liked it, and they just didn't want to use GNOME because GNOME ties well. It handcuffs your hand to your leg and asks you now use your computer. Okay, fine. So if you want KDE but you like the overview, it's official now. If you were using the what was the applet called? Um, the uh, beep, 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 Home Run. If you were using oh, home, home Run, run in the past, yeah, yeah. this is that, mm-hmm. but official. So, so that's good. Being KDE, it's reasonably <laughs> easy. You know, it's like 16 menus in and you can. I'm pretty sure this one will be a single tick box. <laughs> it's literally a tick box. You go mm-hmm. probably right click on the desktop. It's like, I want the overview done. Do you think it'll be something <laughs> they'll switch to to default or? I don't know if no. the, they're, they're not going to make it default. Yeah. The uh, article says that it's not going to be did, but it is going to be enabled. So. Okay. <laughs> Jill. Yeah. Yeah. So honestly, you know, I think actually this is a great addition to the Plasma desktop because the GNOME, the GNOME 40 full screen overview feature, I've actually um, have come to quite enjoy. I've been using it a lot. I never thought I really would, but I've been using it a lot. And since KDE is so customizable and and takes some of the best features from other X window managers and desktop environments, uh, this actually makes sense because because mm-hmm. KDE kind of has the best of all the different window managers and uh, DEs. And um, honestly, this makes the user experience going from GNOME to KDE a bit more uniform. So for those us- users used to GNOME, now they have functionality in KDE that they're used to using. So, it's nice. It is genuinely a good thing to see because, you know, GNOME Mm -hmm. is taking features away from people and KDE (laughs) is introducing stuff that GNOME already had. (laughs) (laughs) I'm very much okay with this. Yes. Are you okay with updating firmware? Because this is a real question. Now, this is something that's been available Mm -hmm. on Linux for a long time. Now, when it for me personally, when it comes to updating firmware, and I mean on anything, I have a very strict um, not broke, don't fix. I mean, it's for me, updating firmware is like entering nuke launch codes. I'm like, come on, because I've I've seen stuff just go up in fire because of a bad firmware flash. I'm like, oh look, because I'm also the guy two days later with a JTAG. I'm like, okay, I can resurrect this thing. Don't want to mess with it. But we've had FW up. Yeah. For a minute, and it does give me the good feels, like just in case I'm not going to be hunting down a thumb drive with FreeDOS on it to run some EXE that may or may not load the thing you need it to. Yeah. Well, the nice thing, Vin, is is with each update, you get more functionality with uh, new hardware. So things will start working more, which is nice. So, yeah, um, our favorite open source daemon for managing the installation of firmware updates on Linux FWUPD has a new release. And yes, that is hard to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't want to say it sounds like, yeah. <laughs> so, FWUPD 1.7.2 is now available with lots of bug fixes and it has a much faster and smaller daemon. So they did. T- the developers did tweaks to the compiler flags to reduce the install size by around 300 kilobytes, which is really great. And this also speeds up the daemon startup by approximately 40 percent by doing less at startup. Hooray! That's you know, a, a faster. <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's actually huge, and uh, this is really cool because it's following the FW. UPD 1.7 and 1.7.1 release, which added support for 
Logitech devices with the unified battery feature. Awesome. The Dell Atomic Dock. The HP Thunderbolt Dock G4. The Wacom 3rd Gen Intuos Bluetooth. And the SteelSeries Stratus Wireless Gaming Controllers. So yeah, with this series, we have lots of new hardware support. And it's faster on top of that. What more can you ask Still for? Series. <laughs> Still series. Now that's yeah. the name I did not expect to see on the list. But yeah, yes. that, that, that's the thing. And it, it first hit me whenever I do a fresh install of Fedora on a laptop and I see the like the little notifications you have for more updates. Okay, right? So click on the thing, install, we need to reboot, reboot away. And you see, oh, look, it's a BIOS <laughs> update. It, you have a laptop in front of you doing a BIOS update where you use the mouse. You didn't type any commands. You didn't do anything. You clicked on the thing to do the updates and you click the button to reboot. That's amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this is possibly the best thing that ever came out of GNOME. I looked at it. I set it up. <laughs> But it showed me uh, that I could update some firmware, and I went, nah. Everything's working. I only update well, firmware for yeah. something that's not working. <laughs> I was having to think uh, about that. I mean, even down to... Uh, it's nice. <laughs> I, I kind of could get a pretty decent deal on um, a newer AMD uh, APU. They don't call them APUs now, do they? What do they call them now? Not APUs. Uh, they are APUs. I call them APUs, but yeah. they're, they're like just the G series. Ryzen's. Yes, yeah. they're APUs. Yeah. <laughs> call them something else. I don't like APUs. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Apu, but then and then do the impersonation, but you can't do that anymore. So. The, what I was getting at <laughs> is this would require <laughs> updating the uefi on that board which i'm not just not gonna do don't trust it i haven't done it the i haven't updated the bios for the um x570 motherboard mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. ryzen um 5495 uh dell laptop the x240 the lenovo b50 all of them it's like do a fresh install it's like you have firmware updates it's like oh boop done <laughs> Now, I will say in yeah. my defense for my brothers and sisters out there, both of the motherboards mm -hmm. that I have in here for the big boxes are MSI. Most of you are nodding your heads if you ever dealt with that. There's no rollback feature on MSI BIOS updates. Yeah, that is an issue. Yeah. <laughs> so you might understand yeah. where I'm coming from. Yeah. All right. Uh, Flatpak, we love containerization, desktop containerization, <laughs> especially on this show. And uh, uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from ludocoat.com all this is going to be in our show notes after the fact uh, this this post comes flat pack is most definitely not the future and this is long because I started reading this and I kept on reading it and I you know what I have to come back and finish this a couple of days ago <laughs> but you it know, was a very good read <laughs> come on who doesn't it, like excellent. a simple calculator being an itsy bitsy 152 megabytes I mean the future is here people <laughs> that's all I'm going to say because flat packs have solved problems which is completely like uh, library fragmentation, app distribution on Linux, solved, done. You can do it with a flat pack. Now, I'm not even joking when I say that because flat packs are not pretty. But what I just said is true. I mean, that really does cut down on things. That's a pragmatic solution for this imperfect world, this ecosystem that we're in. It gets the job done. Is it the end product? Probably not. But you got to think about it kind of like a DMG for a Mac but it's filled with penguins. And then that's the thing, man. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you're going to hate on it, if you're going to hate on snaps, you're going to hate on flat packs, app images, what's your alternative, Brad? That's what I always bring up. And every now and then the brave, brave soul will come at me. Well, what about open build service? And we all have a good laugh and we pat them on the head. And we <laughs> don't Susie? No. No. Here's the thing. You know, there's a couple of good points in here. You know, but the ones that I saw that we're hitting is, uh, you know, because we're no longer in this world where doubling performance memory size every few years. That's not a thing anymore. That, you know, we've been through that. We, oh man, it was a fun ride from like, say, 95 to like 2010. Like, mm -hmm. uh, 
That was pretty neat. Now it's like more cores, lower power. And that's one of the things that's brought up, you know, memory consumption with containerization, uh, extra power usage and all that. But I think it's very negligible. Uh, I'm going to say the biggest Mm -hmm. thing stopping me from doing anything with flat packs is, hey, I don't don't have a need. If I got it native and all that fun stuff, I'm not going to deal with it. But here's a big hurdle. It means I have to install another app store. If everything was a flat pack, maybe, but it's not. So I don't know. Is is flat packs, Jill, will flat packs solve everything or will they um, infest your computer and cause it to run out, kick down the back door, screeching into the night, never to be seen again? <laughs> I don't think it's going to solve everything, but it's it's an option that we have uh, of, of the three top containers, you know, flat packs, snaps and app images. So I think the more container technology we have, the the better the technology will become and the more refined it will become because they're all kind of, the three of those are kind of a little bit competing with each other, but not really. It's Linux. <laughs> <laughs> so, but <laughs> I, I think the author actually brings brings up a lot, and I mean a lot of great points in this, ar- in this article. And one of them I liked was that he said, was an app store based on a sandboxing technology for native native apps is an is a reasonable idea, but for small apps and games from independent developers, a proper sandboxed app marketplace can, in theory, increase their reach. It can eliminate much of the trust that would otherwise be necessary to run them on your computer, and can bring native apps closer to the ease of use of web apps. I think he has a uh, you know really good ideas there on you know to help with the yeah. bloat of flat packs and snaps. And, I mean, what he describes with that is uh, that Jill just quoted is uh, Steam. That's exactly, and he mm-hmm. keeps bringing yeah. up Steam uh, the way that Steam. Valve is yeah. doing. <laughs> pop, pop. The way that Valve is doing the pressure vessel um, and all the different kinds of runtimes that they use. And which you can control. You can effectively select um, what kind of containerization you have for your game if you're using the Steam runtime properly. But, um, you know, this article... Um, it Okay, the title is a bit inflammatory. <laughs> Let's go with that. Uh, but it does call attention <laughs> to a bigger problem, which is the, the whole backwards compatibility on Linux. And... Uh, Ven was not joking because yes, flat packs out of the snaps and flat back and Docker and all the containerized uh, solutions. Flat packs, in my opinion, are the best. And I mm-hmm. think Valve agrees because that's what pressure vessels based on. But yes, that it requires you to have a very big runtime that has all of the libraries, which can take up a lot of space. And he does, that's one of the very good points that he makes, is um, software coding should be more efficient. It should be, it should become increasingly more efficient, more space efficient, more resource efficient. And it hasn't. Just look at any Electron app released in the past two months. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, I mean, the, might, might as yeah. well drag Rust into this too. I mean, <laughs> Rust for all its, um, compared to Electron is lean, mean <laughs> fighting machine. Yes. However, <laughs> but I mean, this is the higher level language you get. I mean, yes, but come on. I think what this really boils down to, I was reading through this on Hacker News. I saw like, this, this will finally get company X, Y, and Z to bring their products and they were talking about adobe and stuff like this over to linux to which i will say no well let me tell you because (laughs) any corporation anybody they're going to use hey fragmentation what they're really saying is we're not going to bother with linux but this is a convenient excuse (laughs) and if you change that and you're like hey look everything's here like um give give me a second come up yeah we got this other reason now see uh pedro and i have a ton of experience with this mentality dealing with uh talking to developers trying to get games over to Linux. Mm-hmm. And, oh boy, our favorite one was middleware. <laughs> this magical middleware. <laughs> oh, I can't get FMOD to work. <laughs> Unity made FMOD a one-click affair. Where did that argument go? Oh, mm-hmm. audio doesn't work on Linux now. Right. Okay. 
which yeah. you know what? I'm just going to say save everybody <laughs> a lot of time because I respect you. If you're like, I don't want to deal with Linux. Cool. But don't come up okay. with this. Don't propagate like, oh, it's fragmentation. It's, you can do it with flat packs. You can do it with snaps. I will say good news, everyone. Um, it's not official official yet, but you should be getting OBS as available on Flathub. Um, officially cool. supported version, which is the one I'm officially gonna, supported. Yes. That's the keyword, right? That's, yeah. that's the keyword. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, and the last point about this very article is one that I disagree with because I was very much on board with everything that was being brought up. Until I read uh, this bit, it mm. is true that in the past, open source library ABIs were flaky. I'm here to tell you that you no longer have to be afraid. I call shenanigans. Unless that was very poorly worded, at which point the shenanigans are just uh, you done fumbled your tongue there or your fingers with the typing. Uh, because no, it hasn't. I downloaded my entire humble library of games, and there are games that straight up don't start, no matter what um, library versions you pull down. You have to be running a kernel from around that time, otherwise it doesn't start at all. Uh, and there's also, uh, yeah, the fact that a ABI changes have made it so you have to have big run times. Like Pedro, we've already Strider, figured out all chat. of the backwards compatibility um, with Windows <laughs> gaming. It's just Proton. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you take a game that doesn't run on Windows 10 or Windows 11, and it will probably run out of the box in Proton, which no one seems to be talking about. Hush. <laughs> 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 it's, it's interesting times and you know uh gnome even made a mention they, they had a blog post uh, on the gnome blog uh addressing some of the stuff with the flat pack with the disk usage and you know deduplication all the other fun stuff if you want to read that i'll go mm -hmm. ahead and drop a link in the show notes you know just coming back for a couple of points about the runtimes not that completely unhinged out of control just a little bit but i mean <laughs> this is what you're going to run into I mean, yes Turning a 4.4 megabyte calculator mm -hmm. into a 130 megabyte download yeah. is annoying, but <laughs> you also picked Kcalc, which downloads the kitchen sink. Gnome Calc. Yes. The KDE framework. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that when I read it, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's the worst possible example, but I see you're trying to illustrate your point. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> this thing. So, this is not a repeat. <laughs> Um, you stop me if you've yeah. heard this one before. Uh, <laughs> German state planning to switch 25,000 PCs to LibreOffice. That's right. Ha! Huh. Holstein is going to be knocking this out. And uh, this is pretty cool. I was just reading through this. This is from the documentfoundation.org. They're also uh, going to be moving everything over to Jitsi instead of Teams. So I'm like, all right, that's pretty dope. The plan is by the end of 2026, Microsoft Office is to be completely replaced in the system on all 25,000 computers used by civil servants and employees, that's including teachers. Mm -hmm. It did make me sad. It's like, oh man, RIP Limux. That was the distribution. <laughs> um, was it Berlin? That they Was it Berlin? What, what was the... Uh, uh, it wasn't Munich. Berlin. Munich. Munich. Yes. <laughs> okay. That was their homegrown... Um, Linux distro that they'd rolled out, then Microsoft was like, what's, uh, see, when well, you want to run some more Windows again? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You know, right, as it stands right now with these 25,000 seats in the Linux distribution have been, like, chosen at a standard, which it clearly should run. What are, what are you running, Pedro? I'm running KD Neon. The opposite of that. Make sure you're running the opposite <laughs> of that. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> One real question is something like w when you're dealing with this, every, everyone, everyone's thinking about word, you know, processing and all that. I'm like, where's the state of LibreOffice calc compared to Excel? Because that's the one that's going to hang people up harder than word. It's Pro. not there yet. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not there. I, I do know. Who, yeah. I do know that open uses office Excel for, for work uh, yeah though this delay is causing me and jill to talk at the same time uh but yes yeah. <laughs> uh I, since i have a windows laptop for work uh whenever i have to deal with say three thousand rows of data with about 15 columns of values um 
I don't even bother with LibreOffice because the two times that I've tried, it pegs one core at 100% and it takes about 10 minutes to open a single CSV while Excel opens it in five seconds. Mm. So, yeah, no, it it's not comparable, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it isn't. I know there, they mentioned also in the article that they would be using in the interview um, only Office. And only Office is actually better with Excel documents uh, from, from me just playing with it and from hearing from other organizations that use it. In the worst so case scenario, they can open up a web browser. Yes. Because <laughs> yeah. Google, uh, if you're using it in Chrome, mm-hmm. uh, the Google spreadsheet from Google Docs will actually do a very good job of it. Mm. <laughs> Isn't there, a, I know we've covered it over the years, there's a couple of like roll your own uh, Google Docs solutions, aren't there? Mm-hmm. Uh, there was there's that. yeah there's a bunch of companies that just offered to set that up locally for you <laughs> that could be interesting i would say good on them this is something we'll definitely have to be keeping an eye on see if it sticks this time because my personal belief is all governments mm. should for the good of the populace all run open software complete stack up yeah, and down absolutely for their own safety too right yes yeah <laughs> You know, it's not just like, oh, we only put back doors and they're everywhere with, you know, and that that's not a healthy dose of paranoia. That's just something that's been proven over and over and over and over. <laughs> and uh, I wonder how much Microsoft is willing to uh, forego on the licensing for them not to do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Microsoft going to Microsoft, baby. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so- Actually, this time, though, they are doing it right. Um, um, unlike what Munich was doing, um, by, you know, by switching users away from MS office to LibreOffice on windows to let them get used to, to their new open source software on the windows OS they are used to using, you know, kudos, let them spend some time with that open source software, like you would with Firefox on windows and then switching them from windows to Linux um, and transitioning this slowly, that was the mistake that Munich made. They they needed they needed to do it slower and do a stepped transition as opposed Munich to Munich spent a lot of time on, on like rollout and training. <laughs> what messed up Munich was Microsoft coming in and paying them. Yes, and they literally went there yeah. just an incredible it's amount like, of money. Please use, we'll give you money. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft yeah, bought their that, way back then. They a had thing. a yeah. perfectly working That's functional true. system. Yeah. Like you're talking about a plan that was so tight, they rolled out their own Linux distribution. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it, yeah, within they did. like five years, they'd already in the savings compared to the Microsoft licensing, the savings had already paid for the migration. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah it was literally Microsoft going yeah. in it's like Microsoft just has go some back dirt to Windows. on somebody's own. Yeah, go back that. to Windows. <laughs> so but what but they're learning from the mistakes that Munich made. And that's the point here. So the only mistake Munich made was going back to Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. <Killing. laughs> yes. <laughs> so there, there were some other things pointed out in that interview. <laughs> Pedro, will you tell me about the Rust Foundation? I can tell you about who the new director and CEO is because that's what this uh, particular bit of news is about. It's uh, Dr. Rebecca Rumble and uh, very, very big kudos to Dr. Rebecca Rumble. Very, very big kudos. Uh, She's now in charge of Rust, the dear darling of uh, coding in 2021. Electron. So no, 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 no. I mean, actual coding. I don't mean, um, (laughs) <laughs> whizzy way come on HTML electron blocks editing. 2022 <laughs> but no no she uh, she's going to be in charge of rust effectively and i that is a position that i do not envy because there's a lot of very opinionated people mm. on the internet hello i don't really care about rust i'm not a developer so i don't uh-huh. really have an opinion <laughs> but <laughs> there's a lot of people with opinions about rust on the internet so that's not a position that i envy and the other bits that seem to be uh, coming down for the Rust Foundation is the big push to get Rust compute into the cloud. The, basically, mm-hmm. Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, the big ones are going, yeah, we oh, want oh. to have all the Rust um, like where do you even find a computing done in... 
Nein, nein. As you want. <lacht> Oh, sorry. Did I, did I say Facebook? I meant Meta. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, no, to move everything, basically all of the hardware intensive workload, move that to remote place so that uh, they can work people to the bone. Code. Code like we're not paying you. And hang on, then you can ask them to come into the office and they'll get even angrier. Yeah, it's like, why? <laughs> you already don't need my computer to process the thing, so why do I need to go in? <laughs> principal, man. It's principal. It's like Pedro. <laughs> so I was, I was really happy to hear this. Congratulations, Rebecca. And I think I have actually years ago met her before at one of the conventions. So, um, but this actually needed to happen for the Rust programming lang language to be, you know, taken seriously in the tech industry. Especially, especially now that the Linux drivers, some Linux drivers are being written in Rust. Microsoft is using Rust to rewrite some Windows components. And the Internet Security Research Group, ISRG, Prosimo project is seeking to secure fundamental Internet programs and protocols by rewriting them in Rust. So they needed a CEO. <laughs> they, they needed a this foundation and, and the, the structure now that they're, they're getting more known in the industry. <laughs> now, lo and behold, and I don't know if this is necessarily related. I personally don't believe it is. I think this is uh, addressing some other issues with the Rust team because it's not every day the entire moderation team <laughs> of a project Oops. nopes at the same time <laughs> unilaterally. Like, we're all out of, all of us, all, every single, we're done. But this is yeah, another thing that I wanted came to up two days ago. Uh, yeah. This, this is uh, <laughs> an interesting merge. Uh, the entire moderation team has resigned effective immediately. The resignation is done in protest of the core team placing themselves unaccountable to anyone but themselves. But isn't, isn't that the easy way to run things? <laughs> yeah. Top you down get to the top and then you make yeah. yourself uh, immune. <laughs> exactly. You don't have to listen to the, the peasants. <laughs> go, yeah. go, go do your jobs. <laughs> so I'm just saying that uh, you probably just want to keep an eye out on rumblings going on because I, I read through the mod team resignation thing. Like, we're not even going to air some dirty laundry. But mm -hmm. and again, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think mm -hmm. these two are like there's any correlation. I yeah. think this is like a, something that's been going on for a while, and I don't know. I don't know. I do know. I do know each and every one of you who support us on Patreon are awesome individuals, carbon-based mm -hmm. entities. Might even call you people. That's over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. we got some bonus stuff we throw your way up to and including live and uncut versions of these shows. I dropped a um, little behind the scenes. Last Friday, I was like, you know, you know what? I'm just going to record the startup procedure. So if you, you've been dying, you like you want to see an old man fumble around for about 15 minutes, flipping <laughs> switches, cutting things on. Like I walked in here with just the nightlight on and I started up everything all over capture and audio systems, which is, uh, I know somebody was like, oh, I've been wondering how that worked. That's up. Go take a look at it. We got some early access stuff. We drop out. We always do our best to get everything out to the masses for free, but we got access to our discord, which is kind of fun. Let's be honest. You get to see Pedro ordering Burger King twice in the same day, making me wonder if Discord is in fact hung. I was like, is that Pedro still there? And I'm trying to scroll. No, and I'm like, oh no, he's back. And I'm like, oh, I need to get somewhere to type. Uh, <laughs> but that is where we're at the other six days a week. And we're actually in there. That is a very important thing yes. I like to throw out because <laughs> I, I back other people on Patreon and I get their Discord. And, you know, I'm not, if you know me, I'm not like, hey, how's it going? No, I'm like, ah, I'll just sit back and watch. I'm like, you're, you're not even like talking in your thing. We're arguing just straight out throughout the day, having our good times and um, discussions yeah. and posting <laughs> posting interesting pictures of um, bathroom appliances. Was, uh, <laughs> yes. <so much. laughs> really, really particular uh, toilet seat dressing that oh, well I, oh, need, I, I needed to steer the conversation <laughs> away from Lamborghini stickers for netbooks. <laughs> hey, it, I'll, I admit that was my fault for not specifying which four netbooks I wanted that I was still missing. Mm. So that's on me. <laughs> and then I gave you the list. 
<laughs> what are you, you what are you trying to unlock man it's like those are the interesting ones those are the ones i want so yeah the, all right they're kind of unicorns unfortunately but th- i want them i do uh, <laughs> we do thank you for your support uh sharing the show like subscribe mm-hmm. all that fun stuff you do on social media and if you want to uh we got a horribly bad idea that's for like studio. You get your name back here. How do you do that? You head over to LinuxCast.com. Pedro's got a list. Jill's got a list. Jordan's mm-hmm. got a list. And I got one for the studio. You pick up something from that. Help us out with whatever. And everything's like show-ish related. Because you know what? I don't care what you say. Stuffed animals are show related for Jill. You see how much time is spent <laughs> yeah. stacking things up to make sure it's in shot for the camera? That's show related. <laughs> so I don't want anyone saying <laughs> <laughs> but we do thank you for your support uh what else oh right tis the season everyone we got one slice of pie Ooh, okay. that's and supposed to be turkey. Pumpkin pie? <laughs> I, I, that's just that's just, just it's, uh, i don't know that's way too much sugar that's that. smarties or uh non-peanutted m&ms oh no you see listen they call me satan for real that's skittles Oh. No, not skittles. <laughs> Skittle pie. <laughs> yeah. A nice savory bite of. Sk- no, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this isn't a Mars rover, Pedro. No, no, it isn't. But it could be uh, if you know, give uh, SpaceX enough money, and if you have the money to buy one of these outright, maybe you have money for that too. Yeah, this is the Open Autonomous Transport System, and uh, right now uh, you can absolutely get one. As a kit, you'll have to put it together yourself, obviously, uh, for 600 euros. Oh, I was going joking. to guess. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the um, the fact that this is 3D printed and they make a very good point out of saying this is all open source. It runs off of a Raspberry Pi. That's the brains of the thing. Obviously, it's a slice of pie. What are we talking about? Uh, the um, and yeah, the. Raspberry Pi with a couple extra PCBs. I'm, I'm looking some at this. And it looks and like I'm walking motors. down the street in Italy getting a free pizza, some Amazon packages, maybe a. It, some or to drink. just insulate the inside proper, properly, put some ice packs on it, and you have a cooler. Or, you know, you can have your, your own little baby Yoda carrying thing, but it's on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you'd like. If you have like the rest of the stuff uh, or you want to build your own with your own motors, your own servos, your own everything. Pedro, you've sold me 45. a box of lies, man. Oh, so it's not available at the moment. It was available yesterday when I had the link to the show notes. <laughs> yeah, I saw But yeah, the, it's $45 or 45 euros for the just the PCBs and the Android app for that you can use as a remote. If you don't want the Android app, that's another 20 euros you can shave off of that and you just pay 25 for just the PCBs and you can supply your own pie and 3D printed parts and everything else yourself. So, yeah, that, that the, the off the shelf price, if you want to buy everything, that's a bit much. But if you just want the PCBs, that's very, very reasonable indeed. And it's all open source software, so... Ask you. <laughs> yeah. I, this is really, I, I was really impressed by this because I could actually definitely see this as a cost effective way to transport, you know, food, medicine, water, first aid kits to people in emergency situations, such as in earthquakes mm-hmm. or someone trapped in a building. We have robots that do that, but they cost, they can cost millions. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I think this is a, a nice solution to, you know, transport emergency Sorry, supplies. James, we don't really like you all that much. So we're going to send uh, Steve's homebrew <laughs> robot to see if it can save you. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's still, I mean, this could be really great for, you know, paramedic departments and, and um, you know, fire departments where, where, you know, budget is a concern. And uh, I like this idea. I think, I think this is going to be in, in the future of that industry, definitely. So, and I also, just something really fun is I love the name, the, the, <laughs> the name of the, uh, uh, 3D printed uh, creature. <laughs> creature. 
or are you, vehicle. Are you vehicle. Gonna name it? Sorry, I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> the name is is called New One, and mm-hmm. um, I thought it was funny. It was New One because if you create a second one, it will be the new one, and the first one will be the old one. <laughs> I just <laughs> was thinking of something funny. <laughs> I mean, 600 bucks <laughs> might be a bit much, but that's if you're just buying everything wholesale. You could probably, you know, work with yep. a base design and come up with something, you know, more lethal. I mean, if you put a little mm-hmm. time in R&D in it. So, yeah, right on. Get one of those high-powered blue lasers and it can run off of the same battery because it probably has enough voltage <laughs> to drive the wheels with enough torque to get it up anything. And then shoot the laser. Yeah, you see, the thing is, I'm going to need more towing <laughs> capacity for the batteries because, you know, railgun. But. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's yeah. going to need also some matter of hankering to the ground. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just going to fly the other oh, way. Oh, no, 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 baby. I'm, I'm going to launch it the first time and stock builds disintegrate. <laughs> <laughs> Kinetic weapon, kids. That's what you came here for. Um <laughs> We're running long. We got to get out of here. Uh, if you want to get old to us, uh, head over to LinuxTeamCast.com. Uh, we got a contact button. We got a show LWDW. Anything else that we get on, leave a comment on YouTube. Uh, we have an Odyssey channel. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're here on Twitch doing it live after the fact, listening to the podcast. But I got to cut on some music and roll some credits. <gasps> In that order, probably. Woo-hoo. No guarantees. <laughs> now the credits show up. No music whatsoever. <laughs> I can make your dreams come true. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jordan. He said artifact creature still counts. <laughs> cool. <laughs> ah, that's a Magic the Gathering reference. I get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steve Husband says, great fun. What did we learn, kids? Aw. Oh, that's a good question. A Joel, what did you learn this evening? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yep, Vin that got sounds lots about right. Of, uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Vin got lots of, of messages <laughs> on Reddit. I asked Vin's popular. Of his, Vin was featured. Yeah. <laughs> and it was nice even week. highlighted in red by Linus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 